Hello everyone, welcome to our series, which is called The Road to Candidates 2022. The Berlin Grand Prix third leg will be coming soon on the 21st of March. So it will be next week. And our very own West Diso will also be playing for his last chance to get that final spot in the candidates. All right, today we will feature Hikaru Nakamura's game. Nakamura won the first leg also in Berlin. Now he has this 13 Grand Prix points. And by the way, Richard Laporte already took the first spot. Why? Because in the third leg, Nakamura, Aronian, and Andrikin are in the same group. All right. So there, there's only one winner in one group. So that means Nakamura could be out, Andrikin could be out, or Aronian could also be out. It's the group of death in group A next week. All right, let's check. Nakamura's chances in the candidates. Here we go. Here's Nakamura's best game against Boris Gelfan. Gelfan played d4 here. Nakamura went for knight to f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6. One of Nakamura's weapons against d4 is the kid or king's Indian. Defense. In this line, white controls space right, with c4, d4, and e4. Knight f3 castles, bishop e2, e5 castles, knight into c6, e5. All right, here white closes the middle with d5. He gets some space. But with this close position, black can try to expand on the king's side. Yeah. When the center is close, you attack on the side of the board or the flank. So after d5, knight into e7. Knight goes to d2. Another way here is knight e1. Nakamura also played a beautiful game here with knight e1. He played a beautiful game here against West Saw. f3, f5, and then f4. We have g5, knight into g6, knight into f6. This is typical, yeah. Knight goes to g6, knight goes to f6, c1, rook f7, the rook on f7 controls c7. Because white has this counterplay of knight b5, c takes on b6, right? King h1, h5, c takes, c takes, knight b5, Nakamura played a6 here. This is against West we saw. Knight a3, there's b5, rook c6, Nakamura has g4, queen c2, queen f8, nice move. With the queen on f8, it protects d6. Rook into c1, bishop d7. So now the rook cannot take the pawn on d6 because queen on f8 protects it. Rook c7, bishop h6, bishop e1, h4. Uh, the king's Indian is quite a scary opening, especially when you're playing the white side. Yeah, when, when you see your opponent attacking your king, you, you, you get nervous. Yeah. If you look at the king's side here, for example, okay, you only have the bishop on e1 and the bishop on e2. Majority of your pieces are on the queen side, yeah, and your king is left alone on h1. So after f takes g4 here, Nakamura has this beautiful f3, sacrifice on e4, rook takes f3, rook takes d7, he has rook f1. The king g2. Here he played bishop e3, but h3 could have been, you know, checkmate. 
soon. Yeah, after h3 here, king takes. Then he has rook f2. If the bishop, for example, takes on f2, queen takes f2. Beautiful. Knight takes on f2, knight f4, check. King goes to h4, we have bishop g5, checkmate. Right? So this was his game against West. So going back, let's try to check Gelfand's game, the one we're featuring today. In this Gelfand game, he played, okay, Gelfand played 92. So 98, okay, the knight moves back to e8, to clear the way for the pawn in f5. b4, all right, this is typical in the king's Indian. White expands, okay, the pawn expansion on the queen side, black also has the king side. So it's a pawn race on opposite sides. So f5, c5, knight goes back to f6. F3, F4. Black has this strong pawn on F4. Later on, black will go for G5, H5, G4, and G3. And white has to be extra careful. Look at black's pieces later in the middle game. Knight C4, G5. All right, clearing also the way for the knight to G6. Knight on f6, bishop, rook, queen, this bishop, all eyeing only one piece. That king. The main objective in the king's union is just the king. The king, the Indian king. So a4, knight into g6, bishop a3, rook f7. The rook on, on, on f7 protects the important c7 square at the same time. White is planning to go for b5, so it's a prophylaxis as well, so you can put the bishop on f8 to protect the important b6 square. b5 takes on c5. Bishop takes c5, h5. Roll, right, rolling on the king. a5, white also rolls on the queen side. But black spawns are scarier than whites. White spawn, no problem. They promote, no problem. But pawns here in front of the king, potential checkmate. The queen side pawns, only potential promotion, but not mate. So b6 here, g3. Oh no, the pawn nail. No escape script for the king. <laughs> Getting closer, getting closer. King goes to h1, right, clearing the way for the bishop to go g1 to protect the king. Nakamura has this uh, tricky bishop f8. Okay, let's just go back after g3. Why cannot push that pawn on h3? Why? Because black has this bishop takes h3. If y captures an h3, queen goes to c8, how do you stop? Queen takes h3 and queen h2. It's unstoppable because you cannot go king g2, there's knight h4. Yes. You move back to king to g1, for example, this queen takes h2, it's either made on g2 or h2. Right. And if you capture g3, for example, pawn takes, there's a reinforcement on f4 to go g3. Okay, let's say you push that pawn on d6. I take, you take, and then I can move my knight to d5 here, right? Opening the line. If you play knight, take d5, hit queen h4, threatening mate once again, h2. Yeah. Can I go rook e1, for example, queen h2, king into f1, knight h4, threatening queen g2, mate. If you go knight e3, queen h1 is mate, right? All right, the very dangerous kid, the king's Indian defense. It's one of the most dangerous lines against d4. Okay, so after king h1, bishop f8. 
very tricky move also here by Nakamura because if in, in the game Gilfan played these six, but let's take a look at Bisha takes a fleet. The string to the Bisha takes a fleet. If you play Bishop takes a fate, Nakamura has an issue four. Why Bishop F8 first, right? Now after take, let's say you take Queen goes to H4. The bishop on C5 is nowhere to be found. You're supposed to protect H2 with Bishop G1. But now it's on F8, no help. After H3, Bishop takes H3. Takes on h3, queen h3, can you queen h2, check eight. Earlier, okay, earlier you cannot go for knight a c4, right? Because after knight a, if you play queen h4, the bishop can go back to g1 to protect h2. That's part of the reason why Gelfand went for king h1. And if you captured a pawn on h2, the bishop would just go back to f2. White wins. So very tricky bishop f8. Pawn to d6, takes on b6 first. Nice move. The main point is that if a takes b6, rook takes a1, queen takes a1, the queen moves away from protecting the d6 pawn. So black wins a pawn. Okay, so after a takes b6, bishop g1 back, knight h4. But the knight now, whew, knight. Rook, g2 pawn, rook e1, Nakamura with his tactics. Yeah. So that is his strength. It's a tactical player. Knight takes g2, he never misses a beat. He takes e7. What did he play? Pawn attacking me. More like, I will take. Rook twenty one. Wow, is this free queen, for example? Two queens, sir. But G two is a checkmate with the protection of the knight on E one. Checkmate on H one. So four queen takes E one. Nice G two check. Opening the file, yeah, sacrificing the pawn to open up the G file. Now you can use the rook on an open file, checking the king. King goes back to h1, bishop h3, threatening mate on g2. Force move, bishop f1. White thought, all right, attack is gone. But then another brilliant queen d3 by Nakamura. What a move. The bishop cannot take either this bishop on h3 or the queen on d3. If you take the bishop on h3, Queen takes f3, queen g2 is made. If you capture the queen on d3, bishop g2 is made. All right, so after queen d3, white space knight takes e5, bishop takes f1 once again. Queen, give it away, bishop g2 is made. Oh my god. So after bishop takes f1, force. Queen takes c3, winning a piece. The pawn cannot promote. Black is one whole rook up. Extra rook. Rook c1, take the knight. Promote takes after rook takes c8, queen e6. Gelfan resign. Yes. Nakamura is hitting the rook. He's also hitting the pawn. He has an extra knight. It's game over here. All right. So this was a very pretty game by the one and only Hikaru Nakamura, who won the first leg in Berlin about two weeks ago, yeah, two or three weeks ago. Nakamura now has 13 Grand Prix points. And um, if, let's say, he qualifies here for the semifinals, he gets seven. So that's 20. I think the magic number here is 20. You get 20, you're in. 20 and you're in. So that's the magic number, 20. 
to zero. So Nakamura just needs to win his group, which is not easy, by the way, because in his group, we have Aroni in second place in the first leg with 10 points. We have Andrikin, who got also 10 points in second place in the Belgrade Grand Prix. So it's the group of death, group A of the third leg. All right, I hope you like our presentation for today. Our next game will be Aronian's Road to Candidates 2022. This is Coach Oliver. Stay safe, everyone.